Hey guys, this is DJ Vu, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make a remix in FL Studio. Before we get started with discussing how to make a remix, let me get some definitions out of the way. Uh, remix, all that means is it means you're taking an original track already put together by a producer, and you're taking it and you're putting your own spin on it. The caveat though is for uh, remixes, or as it's been debated, called official remixes, remixes are done with the permission of the artist. If you take a track that's already been made and you put your own spin on it without the artist's permission, that's called the bootleg. So I've done my uh, obligatory duty to my man Layback Luke and all other guys who have a uh, pet peeve for those two definitions. So now we got that slight uh, side remark out of the way, so you know the difference between the two. Let me show you how you go about getting the various stems so you can go about making your own versions of said tracks. Best way to do it, uh, for me, I personally just like taking the acapella stem and doing the whole thing all over again. Some people like taking the original track and maybe uh, doing the breakdown. Either way, there's no hard and fast rules for it. Uh, but the best way to go about getting stems for your tracks is to either, let's say if you want to just do a breakdown, buy the thing off of iTunes so you can get the full quality, you drop it in there, and then yeah, you just do, you know, you, you drag in your track, you drag in your sample, or whatever track you do, and then you just cut it up, and yeah, take in parts in and out as you see fit throughout the track. The other way, if you want to look just for acapella stems because you like to do my approach, great place, the resource to go to. So you go to acapellasforyou.co.uk. They got a lot of acapellas. I wouldn't say they have all, all of them because it's actually, I would say, like 50-50. Uh, but if you don't find them here, it's a very hard chance you can find them anywhere else. You can do a quick Google search um, because some other people may have it. Uh, but this is pretty much the resource for getting acapellas here. So once you got your acapella, uh, you can go about making your remix. So the way you go about maybe time stretching, everything like that, because let's say... Uh, I'm working with, uh, we'll go with Cascades, Cat, uh, Cascades, man, that's gonna that's gonna haunt me forever. Cascades Atmosphere, and this is running about 120 and 130 BPM, as you can hear here. When I was young, holding a light up in the so it's going pretty fast pace. Uh, but let's say, okay, maybe I want to do like a slow chill step thing. How do I go about taking the sample, slowing it down, so I can do that? Uh, a couple different ways. You, there's the uh, cheapskate way of doing uh, cascade, uh, atmosphere, BPM. And you can go find the original, and actually, Bport will always, always have it. So it said 123. Okay. Uh, but sometimes, because of the way people extract acapellas, uh, especially if the artist didn't officially release them, sometimes they time stretch them weird. So you may not get that, might not be the accurate representation of it. So the other way to make sure to double check your BPM is go to a website called uh, just a B BPM checker. Uh, I personally like the all8.com BPM checker. So then I'll hit play and then I'll tap my keyboard to get the rhythm uh, so I can get a more accurate gauge on the, what the BPM is. So I'll hit play and we'll do it. All my life I've been a star Holding a light up in the dark While I try to keep clear of all the waves in your atmosphere All my life I've been a star all right, so you saw there, 123 is pretty much spot on, so people was not lying to us in this case. So this is what this is how we can go about uh, telling it, telling the FL Studio, okay, this is at 123, lock it there, and then we can swap it around and stretch it so it keeps the key and mostly the tempo without doing any weird artifacts. So the way you go about doing that, go your atmosphere acapella, go your time knob, right click, auto detect, go down to BPM. Uh, as we know, it's one. The original is one twenty three. So put one two three. And now, if you hit play, it's gonna be at one thirty BPM. But you're gonna hear something a little bit weird about it. Star, holding a light up in the dark, while I try to keep clear. So you hear it's at one thirty BPM instead of one twenty three, but it's a little bit chipmunky. The way you go about changing that? Go to your resample knob here and select any of these. I personally like Pro Default, Pro Transient. I haven't found too much of a difference between any of them. I'm sure there is. Someone could probably elaborate on that down in the comments. But at least for me, I go to pro default and it almost always does a trick for me. So now, if you hit play, it sounds normal. And at the BPM. Star, holding a light up in the dark while I try to keep clean. And now let's say, okay, I want to slow it way down to let's say, let's do 100 BPM. And you say, restretch all channels now. Okay, yes. 
I do want to do that, and it'll let it do its thing. Now if we hit play, put the metro on. Oh my life, I've been a star Holding a light up in the dark Now it's a lot slower, you still have it in key, it still has kind of the formants and syllabants and the pitch all in correctly. Uh, the only thing I found weird is if you really stretch it really, really slow, really, really fast, sometimes it may sound a little bit weird altogether, but in this case, we're right on that fine line so you can go this slow and you should be perfectly fine. So that's how you time stretch it. Now, the other th thing you need to do before you can start going about maybe messing around with it, figure out the key of the track. Another way, you can always do again, the cheapskate way, uh, Cascade, you put in your track name, put in key. And you go to the website. So this is in D sharp major, or for you more minor and leaning people, that would be C sharp minor, or not C, -sharp, just C minor. I don't know why I said C sharp, because uh, you did the three steps down and everything. Ah, but that's what key we are in. So once we figure that out, we can go, okay, uh, we are in D sharp major. We'll just make it easy to do that. So we do D. Now we have a D sharp major chord. And now you can just, you know, Put that down, and voila, so. And there you go, that's how you figure out, that's one way to figure out the key. The other way is a lot harder, you need a lot more ear training, and it only took me, it took me about a year, year and a half of literally just practicing this over and over again before I got it, is you can literally do it by ear. Um, so the way you go about doing that, it's a little bit more intensive. We shrink it. Okay, you just pull up a regular piano, just so you're not <laughs> you're not pay, you're just paying attention only to the melody, and then you just jam around until you figure out the key of it. So we do that. So you would just mess around with the keys until you hear. Okay, these you would mess around and say, okay, these keys, these notes all sound in tune with this melody. And I, since I know my patterns between major and minor, I know, okay, if I have my root, the uh, fundamental note sounds like it's a D sharp and it's doing a whole step to an F and a G. Conclusively, it must be a D sharp major triad or a D sharp major key. And likewise, you can do a C minor, what have you. So that's the more advanced way to do it. But almost certainly you can find it just Googling it. I figured I'd just give you guys another toolkit, tool in the toolkit or a toolkit, tool of practice, just in case you can't find that option doesn't work out for you. So that's how you get your Aquab Remix all set up. Once you have this, it's literally, I, this, is the re, this is the reason why I don't have like a full out track is that this is how you have to make a remix, is a remix is exactly like an original. It's completely up to your artistic interpretation. So I'm not gonna be sitting here going, this is what you have to do, you have to do a four out of four kick, la 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 da da. I'm just showing you, okay, this is how you get your whole studio set up for a remix, getting your BPM, figure out the, what the BPM is, figure out what BPM you want to bring it down to, what the original key of the track is. That way, once you have that as the original, once you have that as your foundation, you say, okay, now I know where I'm working with, where can I take this track from? So hopefully these tips help out you guys. And yeah, hopefully this will help you allow you guys to go out and make some kick-ass remixes on your own. So I'll wrap up this video. If you guys enjoy this, uh, got a, and you guys are interested in making maybe dance music off to the side, I got a one-page FL Studio EDM Quick Start Guide. You guys can feel free to check out down below. If that's not more your taste, at least I hope uh, this, re this tutorial helped you walk away with being able to make some kick-ass remixes on your own. So with that, this has been your boy, Colin Ward, aka Deja Vu. Be signing out. Until later, go out and make some kick-ass tracks.